G'day, Ian here from the Australian Employment Party. I've got three pieces of stupid news today. The first is, I read a great article this morning about how what Peter Dutton was doing with his illiterate refugees comment was called throwing a dead cat on the table, which is apparently a way of drawing a discussion away from important things like health, education, welfare and infrastructure, and putting it into a, a battleground which polarizes the opinions of the voters and uh, on which the coalition has shown propensity to be able to swing people in their direction in the past. So I was a sucker for it because I spoke about the refugee thing last night. Anyway, so let's talk about something important. We also have in the news today that the AFP raided uh, Labor staffer and Stephen Conroy's office about NBN leaks because the NBN is such a piss poor excuse for a network. But I don't want to talk about that raid. I just want to talk about the NBN. It is crazy that we didn't just build a fiber network. And I'll tell you why. We built the copper network. And when we built the copper network, we were way less technologically advanced. We we're a much less advanced society. If we've had all these advances in productivity and technology over the past century, then why the hell couldn't we just build the fiber network now? Why were we able to, able to build a more technologically advanced, relatively more technologically advanced piece of infrastructure ages ago than we were to build the relatively same piece of infrastructure these days. And the way that it feels to me is that it's like we have been building all this productive capacity, all this technology uh, that improves the ability of society to produce things, but then we're, we're driving it wrong. It's like we got a car and we've souped it up and we put the sweet tires on it with the rims and we've supercharged it and it's a turbo and we've switched it out for a V8 and all the sports steering wheel, fluffy dice, we've got a sports muffler, and uh, all of this stuff we've been doing to the car, but we're driving it in first gear, and the driver's saying to us, well, I don't know, we're redlining, we're up at 7,000 revs, we can't go any faster, sorry guys. But if they put it up into second gear and third gear and fourth gear, we'll be flying along. And I think that's uh, a, a great metaphor for economic mismanagement of this government, unless they get into their heads that taxation does not fund spending, that deficits are good, and that there is no government debt, and unless we can really hold them to task on this uh, to increase spending through fiscal policy and things like a job guarantee, we're just going to be stuck in first gear, driving at 40 kilometers an hour down the highway while the rest of the world speeds past us, or we all just uh, crash and die. I don't know what the metaphor is there. Anyway, something to think about. Um, the last piece of uh, stupid news is that uh, milk farmers are going out of business. Now, that doesn't sound stupid. It sounds tragic. But what's stupid about it is that uh, the government is allowing it to happen. Why is the government allowing milk farmers to be screwed over by big, big, huge uh, conglomerates like Fonterra and Unilever and Coles, West farmers screwing down the farmers? And here's what happens. They expected China to buy heaps and heaps of milk, and, and China didn't. So there's a glut of milk, which means that basically they have to throw half the milk out, which is stupid in the first place because uh, we don't want to waste the milk, and also we like tortured these cows to get the milk in the first place, and now we're just going to tip it into the sea. So that's a tragedy. But the government could step in and easily just buy the milk that the Chinese aren't going to buy. And they could do things like turn it into cheese and milk powder and ultra-heat-treated milk, and then they could use that for the public purpose by giving it to people for free, um, uh, or, you know, selling it to uh, Coles if they wanted to buy it later, further on down the road. So um, what that would mean is that all of the spare capacity that was going to be, that was unused by the pri uh, private sector that was going to prop up the uh, price of milk could be mopped up by the government. And it's a perfect example of a buffer stock. And this is what the government did with the wool industry in the 70s. Um, the price of wool crashed. Wool farmers were going to go out of business, so the government bought all the wool. And the reason they do it is because if a farm goes out of business, you've got to spend all the money to start the farm up again. You've got to keep the wheels turning, you know, the flywheel spinning. Otherwise, you lose momentum in between these booms and busts. And that's what we were talking about in our latest video about the job guarantees, that the government can spend counter-cyclically and the private sector can spend pro-cyclically and the whole thing evens out. So this is the perfect uh, analogy for it's a buffer stock. It's the same way that we talk about a job guarantee. You can keep your buffer stock unemployed or you can keep them in, uh, employed. You keep a buffer stock of milk. Uh, you know, if, you, if you let the farmers go broke in between booms, then the farmers can't produce anything anymore. If you let people go unemployed and sit on the poverty line uh, on welfare and they can't afford it, they get demoralized, they're not going to be ready to go back to work the next time the boom comes. And in some cases, it's too late. They might be homeless. They might have seen uh, 
uh, irre irrevocable spirals into depression or substance abuse. So the job guarantee is all about uh, keeping an employed buffer stock of labor ready to work when the private sector booms again. Just the same as we could go in and buy all the milk that the Chinese aren't buying, put it into some kind of, kind of long-term storage, uh, milk powder, cheese, UHT, and then use it for the public purpose at some point, or sell it to the private sector when the prices pick up again. Anyway, until next time, I'm Ian Dooley from the Australian Employment Party, and this is the stupid news of the day.